forklift uses the laws of physics to give the operator the power to move and manipulate large loads with effortless precision. A certified forklift operator can precisely stack loads, offload trucks, and pick a single item from a crowded warehouse. If the forklift is not operated correctly and the user does not understand different controls of the forklift, it can be very dangerous. Before being certified to use the forklift, you must learn the vehicle you will be operating. Before using the forklift, first the inspection sheet must be filled out. This needs to be done on a daily basis to ensure the vehicle is in working condition. This is the inspection sheet. The area for the date and initials needs to be filled out to keep record of who inspects the forklift and if the inspection has been completed for that day. Each of the inspection elements need to be checked and signed off on. Also, check under the forklift to make sure there is no fluids leaking. If there is anything wrong with the forklift, do not use it and notify either Joel Parker or Dave Terry. There are different parts of the forklift that you need to familiarize yourself with first. The first is the mast. This is the upright section that contains a set of tracks that house ball bearing rollers and chains. It tilts forward, back, and moves side to side. The next component is the carriage. This is housed within the mast and contains the rollers that allow the load to move up and down. Forks are mounted to the carriage. On the carriage is the backrest. The backrest keeps the load from falling back when the forks are tilted back. And last is the overhead guard. This keeps falling objects from hitting the operator but is not strong enough to withstand the force of a heavy load. When climbing into the forklift, the first part to find is the keyhole. Stick your key into the keyhole and turn the forklift on. The battery charge, hour meter, and orange flashing light will come on. To the right is three levers. The first one is the lift and lower control. This will lift and lower the forks. The middle lever is the mast tilt control. This will tilt the mast forward and back, allowing you to lift or drop skids. The lever on the right will move the forks left and right. This is valuable when getting the forks centered on a load. To the left of the steering wheel is the emergency brake. This engages the brake and prevents it from rolling forward or back when not used. The lever attached to the steering wheel is the forward, reverse, and neutral control. When pushing the lever forward, the forklift then will move forward when the pedal is engaged. When pushing the lever backwards, puts the forklift in reverse. When the pedal is engaged, the forklift will then travel backwards. Pushing the lever in between the two will put the forklift in neutral and will not travel in any direction. On the seat of the forklift is the seat belt. The operator must fasten the seat belt before use. If for any reason the forklift tips over, this will keep the operator inside of the forklift. In the middle of the steering wheel is the horn. The horn sends out an audible alert alerting anyone of the approaching forklift. Driving a forklift is much different from driving a car. The steering is controlled by the rear wheel. This creates back end swing as the back end of the forklift rotates around the front wheels. When turning, the forklift is less stable because the front drive wheels support most of the load. The forklift has different steering characteristics traveling in reverse from when traveling forward. Knowing how the forklift stability triangle works is very important when lifting, moving, and setting down loads. The front axle with the drive wheels act as the base of the triangle and supports the weight of the load. The sides of the stability triangle meet at the point where the forklift steers in the rear. Keeping the center of gravity within the stability triangle keeps the forklift stable and keeps the load from crashing to the ground. If the load moves outside of the stability triangle, it makes both the forklift and the load less stable. This makes it vulnerable to tipping, rolling, or dropping the load. When traveling through any doorways, intersections, and around corners, always sound the horn alerting anyone about to enter that the forklift is approaching. Sounding the horn will allow people to stop and move out of the forklift's way. This is important with anyone else using machinery at the time to prevent a collision. If a pedestrian is walking through one of these areas, they always have the right of way. Pedestrians always have the right of way. When unloading trucks outside of Agilent, use the ramp to exit the building. When using the ramp to exit the building, always back down the ramp. 
traveling down the ramp forward could result in the forklift losing control. Also, when exiting the building, it is important to watch both sides of the ramp so that the forklift does not fall off either side. When unloading or loading a trailer, it is the forklift operator's responsibility to inspect the floor of the trailer, making sure there is no weak parts in the floor. Also, before entering a trailer, the wheels of the trailer must be chopped. This too is the responsibility of the forklift operator before entering the trailer. Once these have been done, it is safe to enter the trailer and offload or load the load. If the load blocks the forward view, always travel backwards leaving a clear sight of anything in the way while driving. It is important to keep a clear line of sight of anything in the way while driving. When lifting a load, it is first important to make sure that the load is secure. If the load is not secured, then while lifting or traveling with the load, it could topple over and be very dangerous. When inserting forks into a skid, it is important to be square to the load and that the forks go all the way through the skid. When the forks are all the way through the skid, tilt the mast back, allowing the skid to completely rest on the backrest. Lift the skid so that it comes up off the ground. The load should be two to four inches off the ground when traveling. While lifting a load, watch the height and ceiling clearance. Lifting a load too high could hit the ceiling, rack, or anything above the load. After dropping the load, look behind the forklift making sure there is no pedestrians or anything behind you when backing out of a skid. If for any reason while using the forklift you must get off of the forklift, set the forklift to neutral and set the emergency brake. If the forklift becomes out of sight or it is more than 25 feet away, you must remove the key, otherwise the forklift is left unattended. After using the forklift, pull the forklift into the parking spot coming to a complete stop. Set the forklift to neutral and engage the emergency brake. Then remove the key from the forklift, turning it off. A designated area has been set for the forklift to charge. When charging the forklift, park the forklift in the area and get off. Unclip the seat of the forklift and unhook the power from the battery. Pull out the cord from the charger and hook it to the forklift. This will begin charging the forklift. The forklift does not need to be charged after every use, but should only be charged when the battery is dead.